After nearly 20 years, The Matrix is back with The Matrix Resurrections. That means today we're gonna stop and rank all four Matrix movies from the worst to the best. Hi, my name is Sean, and I love to talk about movies and TV way too much. With that in mind, go ahead and join me down below in the comment section. Share your ranking of all four Matrix films. My list isn't the right list, it's just my list, and I would love to see yours. One more thing before we get started. If you enjoyed this ranking, I've done a bunch of other sci-fi action movie franchise rankings before. You can check them out right up here when this video is over, and let's get started. In last place, The Matrix Revolutions. This is honestly one of the most disappointing films I have ever seen in a theater. In fact, I was so so disappointed by this film that I didn't rewatch the original Matrix for about 10 years after this movie came out. But I think with time, I've softened my opinion on it a little bit, and I can get some enjoyment out of it because I'm going into it with proper expectations and understanding what they were trying to do with this film. But it feels like it absolutely misses everything that made me fall in love with the original film. The heroism, the victories, the sacrifice, the mythology, it all feels like it's been stripped away or changed into something new, and then we're just left with this overblown slog. The entire first hour of the movie feels like it's a series of leftover ideas that they found in a junk drawer that didn't fit into the first two films, so they just kind of throw it into the, this movie where there's this train station called Limbo and... Agent Smith can infect people in the real world, and none of this really goes anywhere meaningful. It's just like lingering, dangling plot threads that they need to tie off, and it pads the runtime for this film. Beyond that, we don't spend nearly enough time in the actual Matrix doing interesting Matrix stuff. But what I think ultimately killed The Matrix 2 and 3, and especially this film, was bringing back Agent Smith and making him the real ultimate villain of the the original trilogy. In doing so, it shifted the purpose of the franchise from attempting to free mankind, and instead it starts being about trying to stop Agent Smith, and that's not nearly as interesting. Likewise, the goalpost was moved from saving mankind to just saving Zion, and so you have this movie that feels like Acts 2 and 3 don't really go together because Acts 2 is about mankind trying to save themselves from the machines and has the battle between man and the machines. And the third act is about man partnering with the machines to stop Smith, the virus. And they're just two totally different plot lines. And they created a scenario where they come to a final conclusion that's not at all satisfying because it does not deliver on the promise of the premise of the original Matrix, which is that Neo was the one that would free mankind and be the savior. And that's not where this ended. They tried to pretend like it was, like he saved us, he saved us all. But they took that weight of the one and moved it from saving all of mankind to just saving Zion and getting a truce. And that is such a bummer, it's such a letdown, and it's not what the first movie promised. Now, all of that said, the battle for Zion is a pretty cool action sequence with the mech suits, all of the Sentinels showing up. I mean, it can get a little bit overblown at times where they're just like people shooting at clouds of Sentinels flying around. But in general, the sequence does a good job of creating clear objectives that characters need to accomplish. Thus, you feel the tension of will this person get there in time? Will they blow up that thing before this thing gets there? There's a ticking clock with the ship flying in. It's a well-crafted sequence that's actually pretty good and probably not given enough credit. Most of the rest of the other action just kind of feels like it's rehashing things that we've seen before. And when you have a third film in a row where Neil fights Agent Smith, it's just not as interesting anymore because we've seen Neo wipe the floor with this guy twice already. And so when you get here, it's just like, right, we've been there, we've done that. When you put it all together, it's a movie that does have a few moments that are pretty cool, but because they decided to move the goalpost from saving mankind to stopping Agent Smith, of course it comes up disappointing because they came up intentionally short 
of the lofty goal that they promised in the first film. In third place, The Matrix Resurrections. After nearly 20 years, The Matrix came back and it is jam packed with ideas. Good ideas, bad ideas, mediocre ideas, weird ideas, all of them thrown together in a movie that has moments that I loved, ideas that I loved, things about it that were really cool, but the overall experience just felt very peculiar to me. The basic setup for where they leave things and how they brought back Neo and Trinity, I felt worked and made sense. The idea of what they're doing to Neo in the first half of this film and how they're using the Matrix to gaslight Neo in this very broad sense, I thought that was clever and interesting. Maybe goes a little bit too meta. There's too many blatant references, but I didn't mind them going in that direction. I think it just maybe went a little bit too far with where they went with it. And then as you kind of move into the real world and see kind of what's going on, I thought there was some real nice ways that they continued some characters, expanded the mythology, showed how the events of revolutions did matter. And in certain senses, I think this movie made revolutions just a little bit better by showing there was a difference made through the compromise that happened at the end of that film. And you see development here. But by the time you get to the end of this movie, it felt a little bit like we would just been running on a treadmill that stuff happened. There was movement but it doesn't seem like we moved all that far along for, for where they could have gone. Like I, I felt like they set up Priyanka Chopra's character to, to potentially be this person that would take over at the end of this film. They had some dialogue that indicated maybe that was the direction that they were going to go, that we would kick out um, Neil Patrick Harris and she would take over as the benevolent code that loves humans, understands humans, but is code herself and thus could bring in the era of peace where the war ends. It seemed like they set that up and then it, it didn't really go there. And it you get to the end of it. And I don't even know what the end meant. I didn't understand why there was this change of who is the one. I didn't understand the implications of the final scene with Neil Patrick Harris and the dialogue and them being able to rewrite things. Um, and that really, that was kind of my a big problem I had with the entire last half of the film I didn't really know why things were happening or what was happening. Uh, stuff was just a lot of things were happening in front of me. A couple other thoughts on it. I really don't think they should have brought back Agent Smith once again. I think this is one of the just things that they're hung up on Agent Smith and they keep overusing him, working him in in ways that I just don't find interesting. Fourth movie in a row, we're trying to beat Agent Smith, who's this third force in the mix. I don't think it works all that well. I, I did like the idea of the way Morpheus was used. No, 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 oh, no, whoa, no. Whoa, whoa. what do you mean, no? And Code Morpheus, that's interesting. That's kind of a fun concept of even code inside of code being freed from the code. Like, that's what was so frustrating about this movie that um, I actually saw it over a week ago. One of the reasons I didn't post a review for it is I've just been processing, thinking about it. Every time I think about something, I, I hated that. I go, this was really clever. This was really fun. I just don't know that I liked it as a whole. And another thing on it is that I, for a Matrix movie, the, the action was awfully lackluster, especially a Matrix movie 18 years in the future. And nothing in this movie was as exciting or interesting as the visuals that you saw in the first film, which was over 20 years ago. And they have all kinds of new technology to be able to do exciting new things. And I don't think they took advantage of that. Full cards on the table. This is a movie that was incredibly difficult for me to discuss review because the original Matrix means so much to me and was such a big part of why I fell in love with movies. So the idea that we have a new one in and of itself pulls out all kinds of emotions from me. But adding to that, I was invited to a press screening to go see it. The Matrix is one of the movies that set me on the path that I ended up becoming a movie critic. And so being invited to press screening for a Matrix film meant a lot to me. There's a lot of emotions in that experience of watching it. And then with The Matrix, there's always so many ideas to unpack, so much to process with a franchise that means so much to me that I have loved, that has broken my heart and disappointed me. So processing that after one viewing 
is a tough thing to do. I wish I could watch it three more times over the span of the next 10 years and then travel back in time and provide my ranking for you, but I can't do that. So as I sit right now, having seen it only one time, um, I, I just have all sorts of mixed emotions about it. But what I do know is that I didn't immediately love it. And I didn't hate it the way that I did with Revolutions. So it's next to last on my list. Our runner up is The Matrix Reloaded, a very odd mix of good ideas, bad ideas, pretentious ideas, amazing action sequences, groundbreaking special effects, and incredibly dated special effects. It has a little bit of all of it thrown into this film. Like the central plot line about trying to get the key maker to break into the central mainframe to end the Matrix as a whole, Pretty good little plot line. But even what they're trying to do gets lost in all of the philosophical diatribes and overwritten dialogue. One universal, it is the only real truth. Causality. Action, reaction, cause. An effect. And considering the plot line about trying to capture the keymaker takes 30 plus minutes of the runtime, it involves this massive, intricate chase sequence with groundbreaking special effects, amazing practical stunt work all incorporated together. But then it's followed up immediately by essentially montaging through the actual infiltration of the mainframe where they literally are intercutting between them discussing the plan and them enacting the plan as if they took 30 minutes of screen time and squished it down into a five minute montage just to get to the sequence with the architect. And the other thing I realized in my current rewatching of the Matrix films is that part of that is because some of the scenes that explain what was happening are here are actually in the video game Enter the Matrix. They did a tie in video game that has an hour of footage shot by the Wachowski that takes place before, during, and after this movie. What was that? I think it was an EMP. We've just lost contact with the Icarus. What? And a Novelis, and a Caduceus. How was that possible? And some of them feel like deleted scenes from this film that needed to be in this movie. The Matrix Reloaded makes more sense and is better if you go on YouTube and watch the Enter the Matrix cutscene movie. And this is followed by one of the most ludicrous and verbose exposition dumps in cinematic history. You are the eventuality of an anomaly which has led you inexorably. I prefer counting from the emergence of one integral anomaly to the emergence of the next. And 18 years later, I can't decide if it was one of the most brilliant subversion of expectations that's ever happened or the dumbest example of a filmmaker deconstructing their own mythology and thus crashing their own franchise straight into a wall. 18 years of reflection, I don't think the problem was the deconstruction itself. The problem was they didn't come up with something better than what they promised in the first film. If Revolutions had found a way to allow Neo to truly deliver on the promise of the premise of the first film, this deconstruction would have this, been this brilliant plot twist that changed our understandings of everything. But as is, because in the third film they made Smith the ultimate villain that needed to be defeated and there's a partnership with the machines and everyone's still in the Matrix at the end of the film. Because of that, it just felt, felt like they wrote themselves into a corner, destroyed their own mythology, and just undermined their own brilliant sci-fi premise. Still, the action here is pretty phenomenal. With a bigger budget and four more years of technological advancements, they were able to do wild, insane things like we had never seen before. Now, certainly some of the full CGI characters, in particular in the Smith fight scene, stands out quite a bit 18 years later, and it, it stood out when the movie came out too. The technology wasn't there yet to have enough detail in fully CGI characters, but still, 
very inventive sequences. They tried to top what they were doing before while bringing in new technology. Now, the problem they did also run into with this movie with the action is that just Neo was too overpowered and so could just dominate everybody in every fight sequence. And during the freeway chase, which is fantastic, they had to like find an excuse as to why he's on the other part of the world and isn't involved in that fight scene because he could have just picked them up at the beginning and saved all the time on it. But at the end of the day, it's a movie that has a bunch of ideas that are really great. And ultimately, the thing that killed this movie is that revolutions kind of sucked. And thus, what they did with this film lands really flat on rewatch. And it turns out their brilliant ideas were just them writing themselves into the corner. But the winner, the classic, The Matrix, one of the greatest sci-fi movies of all time, one of the greatest action movies of all time, one of the greatest martial arts movies of all time. And that's precisely why this movie is so brilliant. It's able to effortlessly bring together the martial arts of Yuan Wu Ping, the gunplay of John Woo's action movies, the mythology of Terminator, as well as a bunch of anime, and then incorporates a bunch of philosophical ideas from both the East and the West, all while telling a hero's journey. And it feels cohesive, it feels built out, it feels fleshed out, and all of it is done with excellence. Much like the work of Quentin Tarantino, it wears its influences on its sleeve. It's very clear who inspired each element of this film, but it also creates something wholly original and unique. Then add to that, it mixes in a bunch of cutting edge technology in creative ways. It's not just that they had visual effects, it's that they stopped to think, what's the interesting thing that you can do with this new technology, so much so that over 20 years later, we're still talking about bullet time and those shots of Neo leaning backwards or Trinity jumping up into her pose are so iconic that they showed up in Fortnite last week. But what gives the movie its narrative cohesion and emotional weight are two questions. And both of them do a great job of just building and creating intrigue and tension throughout the entire runtime. Those two questions, what is the matrix? which involves the world building, and is he the one, which provides the character development and the character arc. The first half of the film just has you on the edge of your seat wondering like, what on earth is going on here? And when you move into the middle section of the film that's delivering all the exposition answering that question, you're so fascinated by the question that you don't mind that there's a 20, 30 minute exposition dump in the middle of the film. Likewise, the movie does a great job of delivering exposition while interesting things are happening, whether seeing the world, a fight scene taking place or people jumping across buildings. And then as you go into the second half of the film that really addresses that second question of, is he the one it keeps giving you this back and forth of hope or not. And because we're invested in that question and the characters themselves, when Neo decides that he's going to act and go and save Morpheus, despite doubting, not believing that he's the one, it's a truly heroic act because he knows he's, he can die. He will die if he does this. And so when you move into those final moments and the amazing action is taking place, the music is swelling and he's starting to believe it is just so powerful and profound. It is just top notch filmmaking that combines cutting edge technology, amazing gun and fight choreography with fantastic world building and character arcs and development that you actually care about that pay off so well at the end of this film. Without question, without competition, The Matrix comes in at number one. If you enjoyed this video, I've got more just like it. You can check out that playlist right over there where I've ranked a bunch of the other classic, iconic sci-fi action franchises. Thank you so much for watching and keep talking movies too much.